All right, well, welcome back, everybody. A lot of y'all have asked for me to do smoking or cooking videos on the YouTube channel here. So while we're never gonna be a true cooking channel or anything like that, this is just, again, kind of our lifestyle and how we live. That's what the channel's all about. But we do a lot of firewood and splitting and things like that on the channel. So it makes sense to maybe throw in some smoking videos every now and then, especially with the metal work and stuff that I do. And I plan on building some smokers down the road. So long story short, y'all asked, I'm going to deliver. A friend and I went last night and got some mullet. If you'd be interested in watching that trip and how I clean these, that's on our other channel, The Kelly's Outdoors. I'll put a link to that video down in the description. And always at the end of the video, I usually pop up four of my suggested videos. I'll make sure I put it in there as well. So if you'd like to watch that trip, and again, how I clean these up, uh, pop over to that video. For now, I'm gonna get all these cleaned up on the pan and I'll meet y'all back at the smoker in just a minute. All right, y'all. So here we are. Excuse the fan running in the background. It is hot. It's gonna be in the 80s today. My, what a crazy change. I know all y'all up north watching this are hating me right now. There goes that. All right, so here is my Oklahoma Joe. I've had this thing forever. It's been an awesome smoker, real thick metal. Has lasted and lasted, lasted. Nothing's even showing signs of rusting out. However, I definitely need a bigger smoker whenever I bring home a lot of fish like this. We're gonna work on that before too long. So how I always start my fire in my fire box. I'll put just a few charcoal briquettes in there to go ahead and get me some coals going. And then I'll layer in my wood on top. We'll grab some wood in just a second. All right, so as y'all can see, I just put, you know, a couple handfuls in there. That will, uh, like I said, that'll go ahead and get my coal started. And that gives me something to lay my wood on top of. So let's head over to the old wood rack, AKA, wheelbarrow and grab us a few pieces excuse the mess all right so this is all that cherry i just split that i'm letting season and here is some old pieces of uh oak and i'm talking like several years old but still burns just fine and uh here's some chunks of pecan so we don't need much i got a little bit on the grill I typically Whenever I'm doing fish, I really like pecan. And I'll even, this is probably the one wood that I will allow a little bit of bark on it. Uh, you just gotta be careful. So it's pretty simple at this point. Everything I typically start with some oak chunks. And then once those get burning good, I'll add a few pieces of pecan as needed. Um, that's about it. I even had some leftover wood from the last burn that didn't burn completely. I'll throw that in there. We're not trying to make a big raging fire here. Low and slow is the name of the game. All right, so we'll get these going. Because that's instant light charcoal, I'm definitely gonna let that charcoal burn until it's white to make for sure there is no more of that lighter fluid in them. All right, well, welcome to our makeshift outdoor kitchen in my shop. So, as far as smoking fish, because these are meant for a dip, I keep it very, very simple. We put a little bit of Creole seasoning on there. Tony Sashery's is a real good one. I just happen to be out of. A little bit of garlic, that's it. This already has a pile of salt in it, so I'm not gonna salt the fish anymore. But what we're really going for is just the smoke flavor. Honestly, you don't even have to season these at all because I'm gonna put them in a dip with a bunch of wet ingredients. That's where they're truly gonna get seasoned. All I want the smoker to do is again, just give them a smoky flavor. But I do like Creole seasoning. I like to put it on my fish and we put garlic on absolutely everything. So, I'll just lightly dust them, not going crazy here. Now, if I were just going to smoke these fish to eat, yeah, I probably would go a little crazier with the seasonings. Alright, let's carry these outside. 
Now, I leave scales on my fish whenever I smoke them like this and put scales side down. That way your skin and your meat doesn't stick to your grapes. All right, Lord knows everybody has a million and one different ways to smoke something. I am just a weekend warrior, but one thing I do want to point out that is critical when it comes to smoking, and boy, I learned this the hard way. You do not trust the junky old temperature gauge that they gave you up top. Heat rises, so the top is always going to be way hotter than grate level. So I added me a couple of uh, thermometers here at grate level. That's where it is critical. Also, this was cheap, but boy, did it work so good. I cut an aluminum pan and stuck right here because you don't want the heat to come up in a smoker and go straight out these vertical stacks. They should put them in the bottom. You want the heat to fill up in here and then drive itself down again, getting at great level. That one simple cheap design right there made a tremendous difference and my cooking ability. I don't know if y'all just seen a second ago, these were within about one to two degrees of each other. Before I put that one aluminum foil pan in there, it'd be 15 degrees hotter on this side uh, than that side. So it made cooking very inconsistent. Consistency is key when it comes to smoking. So the other thing that I do that's controversy, you know, I'll always leave my vent wide open and I control my heat over here. Now that we've got this burning good, I'll go ahead and close it off watch my temperature and I want to stay between 2 to 225 for these fish I like to go very slow on them let them go for just a few hours like three to four hours I don't try to cook these quick I'm not here to bake them as soon as they start flaking off the skin they're ready all right and last but not least no smoker or grill works period without an adult beverage everybody knows that I'm not going anywhere today gonna enjoy myself you know since we're kind of sitting here hanging out talking about smokers again y'all requested this video this is pretty critical too I'm not the world's best at watching my smoke but really everybody thinks you have to have smoke bellowing out of here to have a smoky flavor uh, exact opposite the least amount of smoke you have the better it's already in there it's already gonna give it flavor the stronger and thicker that smoke is, which means you're starving it for oxygen, the more creosote you get on the inside, which you kind of see I have some of that, so I'm a little guilty here, but the more bitter and really strong smoke taste that you get, not necessarily the good smoke taste that you're looking for. So I always try to watch this stack, try to, and uh, when I start seeing it smoking a bit much, that lets me know that I'm kind of starving for oxygen on the other end. I'll open it up, monitor my temperatures, and try to get it back to where it's a good clean burn in there and there's hardly no smoke coming out. But I'm almost kind of asking more than telling y'all on this. I, again, weekend warrior, don't smoke a whole lot. Give me some tips on how y'all smoke. I know a lot of y'all do. All right, so we've been going, I don't know, maybe an hour. I'm noticing my temperature's starting to stay a little below the 200 mark. So I think it is time to throw another piece on. This is about the time I like to add some of that pecan too or pecan, however you want to pronounce it. So as you can see, we've pretty well burnt down. Now we got some chunks and coals in the bottom. I'll add one more piece. I usually start to let it flare up for just a second. We'll cut that back off. We don't want too much of a flame in there to really run our heat up. Like I said, I like to keep things nice and consistent. So that's what I love about this. Just come out here and stoke it maybe every 45 minutes to an hour enjoy yourself have a nice cool drink or work on another project in the yard absolutely beautiful day today i mean just beautiful
these have been going for a few hours. I think they're getting pretty close to ready. Just a little bit of moisture in there, but you see how that meat's wanting to flake and pull away? That's just what I'm looking for, just like that. And you can actually let these go even longer and dry out when you're gonna put them in dip because you're gonna put them in wet ingredients, so you about really can't mess this up. Let's pull a few off, make some dip. All right, so y'all probably can't see me, but that's okay, what you need to see is the food. So we've got some of the mullet right here. And what I usually do is just take an old stainless bowl and start peeling that meat right off that skin. That's why it does not matter if the skin and scales are still on there. And I typically will just take that meat and kind of roll it into some chunks there. And I'm also feeling for bones. Once I get up a little bit closer to the rib cage, that's where I'll really start paying attention for bones. So all this right here is boneless. Like I said, I'm just rolling it up into some chunks, just breaking it up a little. We kind of like our dip to be a little chunky, but I don't like it pureed like you see at restaurant where there's pretty much no fish in it. It is just uh, cream cheese and some other stuff. So I really don't know what you're buying at the restaurant like that. So I'll go ahead and knock all these fish out. We'll get us a bowl full of meat and then I'll show you the uh, wet ingredients and seasonings. All right, so all I did was basically almost mince up half of a white onion. I have tried making this recipe without onion and man, this is a flavor that it just really needs. And honestly, you don't even have to do half an onion because the onion is, is quite strong. So I think I'm gonna stop with that right there. I probably wound up doing maybe a third of an onion right there. All right, now if y'all watched me do this on our other channel, this won't be as much of a shock to you. But this is key, and I know a lot of y'all do not like Miracle I do not like mayonnaise, but mayonnaise has to go in here too. Once it's all mixed together, trust me, you don't taste it. The reason you've got to use Miracle Whip is it's pretty high in sugar. I do not do cream cheese in my dip. I think it's just, it makes it thick, makes your cracker break. I, I don't like it, and a lot of people use it as a filler. So you go to a restaurant, pay $10 for a little thing of dip, and it's mostly cream cheese. So because I substitute the cream cheese and the sweetness, Miracle Whip is perfect for that. So I usually do about half parts Miracle Whip to half parts mayonnaise. Now I don't measure any of this. I just mix it up to the consistency that we like. Your consistency may be completely different. All right, you can see it's coming out still very chunky and stuck to the spoon. So I can definitely tell I'm gonna need a little more of each. But before I do too much more of each, we have some other wet ingredients to add, so let's do that. All right, something else I don't like, Worcestershire, but I put it in here, it just works with this. And again, sorry, I don't know how much, just a couple dashes. Texas Pete hot sauce, love it. Just give it an awesome kick. And it gives it some good color too. I don't know, maybe a teaspoon of that. I love Chipotle. Oh man, good stuff. I don't put much of this, but it does give it a nice little flavor. Probably not even a teaspoon of that. This is a good time to add some garlic. You don't have to do much since it was already on the fish. And I'll put just a little bit more Creole seasoning or if you don't use this, this would be a time to add a tiny little bit of salt and pepper. But definitely don't add no salt if you add this seasoning. Can't stress that enough, this is super salty. So yeah, still a bit chunky. So I'm gonna add another dab of mayonnaise and a little bit of Miracle Whip. All right, I can tell you that's starting to get the consistency that we like. Again, we're not looking for a bunch of filler materi materials. We actually want to eat the fish. So we like our dip a little chunky. And we'll typically scoop it out with a fork and put it on the cracker because the cracker will kind of break in this. But as you can see, the majority of what you're getting is meat. So this is a good time to test it. But one thing you've got to keep in mind here, if you like your 
dips a little spicy, the longer this sits in the refrigerator, the more it will absorb flavors and it'll get hotter. So if it's not quite hot enough right now, you need to put it in the refrigerator for a while, let it sit and try it before you add any other spices. I think it's really good. I actually nailed that that time. It's not uncommon for me to have to add a little more here and there. Now again, refrigerator is key. Go put it in there for a couple hours. The onions will actually sweat. All the flavors will come together and it will taste different once it sits in the refrigerator for a while. And it will get hotter, I promise you. So that's what I'm gonna do. Throw this in the refrigerator, wait for Tiffany to get home. This is one of her favorite things that I make. I'll let her try some and we'll wrap this video up. All right, y'all, moment of truth. She has made it home. This is my taste tester. She will <laughs> let me know if I have done a good job or a bad job. And she is honest. I'm very honest. <laughs> So here it is, it's been sitting in the refrigerator for several hours, which is perfect. Somebody is jumping and wanting something bad. So, good job? Mm -hmm. All right, good. So, there it is, y'all. Mullet dip. Doesn't Very look, good smoke flavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look fantastic sitting in the bowl, but it's meat. It is not that stuff you get at the restaurant, which is pure cream okay. cheese. Some little guy down here is just, <laughs> look at him. He wants some too bad. Well, he got a cracker. <laughs> he thinks, uh, thinks he got everything. All right, I guess I'm going to try me one piece real quick. You can't go wrong with this anyway, mm. so... Well, you can if it's just pure cream cheese and no meat <laughs> at the restaurant and $10. Mm -hmm. Yum. Mm -hmm. We can't be carrying this anywhere. It's so good. <laughs> it is so good. Oh, and the onion's perfect. I was telling them earlier, we tried doing it without the onion. Mm. I know raw onion affects a lot of people, but it gives it a flavor that nothing else does you've right. got to add a little bit of onion mm -hmm. i didn't do much this time I only no it was did, perfect i okay. did a third of an onion this time I it's and i mixed strong. it down to nothing so oh the onion's such mm -hmm. a good flavor all right well hopefully you enjoyed it and uh we're gonna wrap this thing up go out and actually enjoy our supper and probably much on a little more of this we'll catch you on the next video so uh like i said this is a little different but hopefully you liked it because y'all requested it thanks for watching be interested in how i clean these and that video I'll put it in the description down below, and I'll also probably include it at the end of this video. All right, well, welcome back, everybody. So, a lot of y'all have asked for me to do cooking or smoking videos on this show. Swallow the net. Now simmer. Uh. How many times is it going to take to do an intro?